All right, what's up, everybody? It's Nick Akin here in Tokyo, Japan. I'm on ground in Ariaki with the main man, the lion killer, Gary Tonin, is back in one championship for a huge fight against Martin Nguyen. This is for Sports Key to MMA. Gary, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. You know, happy to be here in Tokyo. Got in a few days ago, just finally adjusting to the time. So, yeah, feeling a lot more comfortable now. Repping the red, white, and blue, is it? Always, always, man. Yeah, the true American hero coming to enemy territory <laughs> to take down Martin, uh, former champion, right? And this fight has been in the works, I want to say for years, right? And before the pandemic, it looked like you were going to fight Martin when he still had the belt. A lot of things have changed since then. His life, your life in, sure. in the industry, in this promotion. What a long journey. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I've, I've been looking forward to this fight since I joined One Championship. When I, when I first started in One Championship is when he was already i think uh back you know two division champion and trying to fight for a third you know in a third division and all these sorts of things so i i knew this is going to be the person that i was most that was going to be most important to beat in my career in this division so uh, i've been looking forward to this for a long time yeah and he had an up and down career as well in one you guys have both kind of bounced back from a few setbacks haven't you what's changed you know, why, why is this going to be a better fight now, given you've had that experience? Uh, I definitely think this will be a better fight now. You know, well, you know, it depends on the way that you look at it from the fan perspective. Maybe a better fight would have been earlier because then it would be more competitive. We'll see. <laughs> I still think it's going to be a very competitive fight. I look at him as a very tough fighter. Uh, so there's no question to me uh, that, that this should be a very difficult contest. You know, who knows? You know, maybe I'm making an under assessment of, you know, my improvements and abilities and these sorts of things. But uh, I anticipate this to be difficult. So. Um, you know, I think it'll be a better fight. I think it's, it's more competitive now for sure. I think, uh, you know, every day, month, year that goes by, you know, my striking abilities get better and I get more comfortable out there and it's only going to spell more danger for these guys, not just in the grappling situations, but also the standing situations. Um, I'm going to be less vulnerable to the things that they have, you know, the weapons that they've accrued. So, um, I think that this is going to be the, this is a, this is a good moment for this fight to have happened. You know, uh, I would have for sure welcomed it earlier. Um, because that was the stage that I was at in my career. But like you said, you know, things happen. It is what it is. And, um, you know, here we are. And I think it's, you know, sometimes things just work out for the best. Yeah. And Tokyo, I think, holds a special place in your heart. I don't know if you remember, but you fought, of course, you remember the fighting here, but I saw you in Tokyo once first ever Japan event. And then you came back, you made quick work of your opponent, then you made quick work of a bento box I think, in front of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I know that you 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 love the people here, you love the place. I kind of overheard yeah. you saying how much you prefer it to America in some ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're gonna you're hard pressed to find me saying that I you know I prefer uh, you know any other country to America, but in aspects, you know, there's certain th there's certain things for sure that when you're in Japan, you you wonder to yourself as an American how we don't how we don't have our uh, stuff together let's say um you know to the degree that they do you know things like public transportation and stuff like that and just the level of organization and you know i just did really you know strongly admire like well i'm very proud you know of my country and, and where i come from and everything like that i i absolutely admire the strengths of uh other nations and things that i travel to and you know one of the strengths that i see you know out here in japan uh occurs in my opinion both on an individual as well as a, a social level where it just really feels like almost every person that you encounter is trying to do whatever it is that they do to the best of their ability and then some. And in addition to that, also taking into the, to account the community that they're a part of and trying to do right, not just not just for their own individual purposes, because that's, that's one thing that I think in the United States we do very, very well. Um, but really taking into account the concerns of other people and, and the, their needs, wants, et cetera, and the things that you know, would be beneficial to them and uh, you see that all across the board in various businesses and people that you encounter and these sorts of things. And it's just a really cool thing to be a part of, uh, you know, a, a cohesive culture like that. That young man four years ago, nearly, what would you tell him now? You, you were on a tear in one, I think five or six, oh, six and oh. No one's stopping you. You encountered some adversity now. Yeah. You know, looking back, you know, what was going through your mind at that time? You know, did you feel unstoppable? Man, yeah. Uh, I mean, I still do in a way, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, I would say, uh, it, you know, going back, and this is always an interesting question, you know, talking about, you know, talking to your, your past self, it's almost impossible to truly prepare yourself for the, for the future, you know, and uh, uh, you, you kind of need to have the experiences that you have in order to get to wherever it is that you go. This is why, 
anytime somebody asks me, you know, if I have any regrets or anything like that, it's, it's hard for me to really feel a sense of re regret because I, I love my life and like where I am, you know, maybe there are some things along the way that didn't, that were unpleasant that, that happened. But as long as I'm, you know, uh, I'm happy with you know, my life, my life's pursuits and all these sorts of things. And I'm still motivated to get better every day, wake up in the morning, you know, the way I look at it, like each experience that I had has contributed to that in, in some market way. So as long as I still feel that way, I don't feel a need or a sense uh, for regret or a need to change anything or anything like that. You know, I guess I would, uh, I guess I would just tell myself, you know, you know, be patient and, uh, you know, it's, uh, change will come, you know. Well, look, whoever wins this, I'm pretty sure is going to get some kind of title shot. Mm -hmm. But let's let's look ahead to Qatar. Who's who's going to win? Who's becoming undisputed champ? Is it Tenkai or is it Tanli? Man, you know, uh, I have a lot more experience uh, researching and watching Fan Lei, so I'm going to be a little bit biased here in my in my answer, and I'm, I'm going to say I think Fan is going to learn from his previous experience, and I think he's going to come out there, uh, you know, victorious. He's been a little bit more active, also, you know, um, but not you know not crazy. They both were you know injured in their own ways, so um, I think it's it's more likely you know that he walks away with the victory. But let's see, you know, it's a, it's going to be an exciting bout. Um, more good, more research for me, you know, for when I have to fight either one of these guys. So. Uh, excited to watch that fight. I know I'll be watching. And if you yeah, if you win this one, then you know when do you want to get back in there to fight the winner of that one? Yeah, man. So we got two USA cards yeah. coming up. I believe uh, are they coming back to Colorado too? Yeah, maybe? September in the Ball Arena, Denver, and then okay. State Farm Arena in mm. November in Atlanta. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I would love to be in either of those places. I mean, anywhere close to home is great. You know, like <laughs> as you see me here, you know, in, the, in my very American uh, presence. Of course, you know, I'm super proud to represent my country. It's been great to be able to do that overseas, but it would be really cool to have friends and family be able to come, you know, and fans and all these sorts of things, you know, come and watch me out there. You know, it's obviously very difficult, you know, to get people to come all the way out to Japan or anywhere else that I might be fighting. So I think that'll be a really cool opportunity for me. So I would love to see, you know, the, that title fight happen on one of those cards. I'm sure that would be an exciting thing for the fans to see. Um, I think, you know, I'm an American fighter that's been with one for a pretty decent amount of time now doing a lot of great things. So I don't see how it doesn't make sense, but you never know. You know, there's a lot to offer here at one. There's a lot of really tough guys. So, you know, we'll see what kind of cards they put together. I'm sure it's going to be great, but man, it would be a damn shame to not have you on uh, at least one of those cards, whether it's a title shot, whether it's a grappling match, whether it's something I, I promise you guys, I'm going to be working as hard as I can to get out there. So I have to ask you guys to do the same, to push as hard <laughs> as you can to make sure and I'm on those cards, you know, raise your voice and make sure one championship knows that you want me out there. Yeah, I can't believe you weren't on that first Denver card. Yeah. It's a travesty. We'll for make sure. sure you're on this one. Right, just finally, I'm presuming you're going to be looking for that patented Gary Tonin leg lock. Well, you, you know, you're you going to go after that leg, I presume, of Martin on Sunday. Is there any way he can stop you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, he's resilient, man. He's very resilient. You know, it's going to take some time, I think. I don't think this is something where I'm just going to get you know, some quick finish, you know, uh, in an early round or anything like that. He's a very seasoned fighter, very rarely has a performance where, you know, where something happens like that. So, um, I, I really think that, uh, this is going to, I'm going to have to take my time and I'm going to have to be okay with, you know, losing him a few times and I try to take him down and, and follow him and stay on him, get, keep that persistent pressure and just continue to be, you know, the predator in that situation, just constantly stalking my prey and, um, you know, if I'm able to maintain that level of pressure, I think, you know, I walk away victorious and, uh, you know, hopefully with submission win, but, I, I'm also okay with beating him up with my fists. That, that sounds <laughs> nice too. Yeah. How are those fists? You've been working on them? Yeah, man. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good both on the ground and then in the standing position, man. Um, preparing for the threats that Martin poses, I feel has made me much stronger at, in the standing position. So just watch out for those knees to the head. That's right. right. Last time was, uh, Shamil was, yeah. Hitting you up. Mm -hmm. uh, how long did it take? Uh, you were all bandaged then, mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah, was yeah. it a rough, rough ride home? <laughs> it was fine, yeah. Uh, ironically, uh, my my toughest knee that I ever took was uh, Kiyomi Masashima. Like that fight, like he kneed me really hard at the end of the second round. And that, it like changed the out, the changed the rest of the fight because I had grappled them, out grappled them for two rounds. And like the third round, I came out last <laughs> I couldn't like keep my distance and like tag this guy because I don't want to get kneed <laughs> in the face again, man. It was, it was rough. So, I mean, some of those really count. Um, you know, I was lucky enough or, you know, skilled enough, however you want to put it, to position myself in a place where when uh, Shamil was throwing those knees, it wasn't as consequential as the, as that Matsushima knee, because if every single one of those knees was as consequential as that, you know, we probably would have, the fight would have been over. So 
um, you know, I, I, it was, I was lucky or like I said, skilled enough to, to walk away from that pretty, you know, relatively unscathed with, you know, a small cut or something like that on the head. But I really didn't walk away feeling like a lot of head trauma or anything. And it's funny in my perception when I was in that moment was like, oh man, I spent half the round there getting even head. Like in that, <laughs> it just, it felt like eternity. And then like, I went back and watched the fight and it's like, oh, I was there for like 45 seconds. Like it wasn't, it was a while, but it wasn't that bad, you know? And then I yeah. came back and, and arguably probably won the round. So, yeah. All right. Well, I always love chatting to you, Gary. Very eloquent man. Yeah. Very thoughtful. Good luck for Sunday. Uh, Thanks win so or lose. You know, I always love seeing you fight as well. And yes, uh, great to see you again in Tokyo. Thanks so much. All right. All right.